Give it just a second. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, this is uh, continuing our monthly technology overviews of uh, certain products, uh, something in the industry that uh, might be of interest to you, and of course, Forerunner wants to bring it to your attention. So, uh, you know, over the last month or so, I've met with the numerous enterprise customers, and the topic of the attendant console has came up quite a bit. Um, so today, I asked Brian Baker with NEC to do an overview of the NEC, the UA5200 console, also called the UC attendant. And uh, Brian's going to give us a, a high-level overview of the product and then also jump into a demo and show you some of the cool features around that. Um, like I always do, I do a few slides on Forerunner, kind of tell you some of the newer stuff out about us. So let me do that. If I can, there we go. Um, so, you know, if uh, these webinars, we record. We put them on our website for you to go back and, and listen to at any time. So if you go to our website, uh, frtinc.com, you go under the news and events tab and underneath webinars are all the webinars that we've done and recorded for you. Okay, we'll add this one. They'll be up there in the next week or so. Okay, the NEC partnership, um, just some highlights on this. We are a nationwide exclusive channel partner for NEC. We're a triple diamond dealer, which is their largest or their highest uh, level partnership. Uh, it means a few things for you, right? Um, priority access in intact is a big one for you. And then, um, you know, discounts on product and solutions as well, right? Uh, we're the fastest growing par partner for NEC, um, which is uh, pretty nice. So over the last four years, our company has focused on enterprise and been very successful on um, many different areas, the VA hospitals being one of them, and then just growing across the country, all right? We're the first partner to install a virtualized 9500. Um, which most of you have uh, started to look at, uh, start to budget for, and, um, and starting to try to, to look at the benefits of going to a 9500. Um, and, and we've done numerous of those. And then the next step for some of you is to virtualize that system. So we, we were the first one to do that and actually have done a few since then. Uh, we're also the first partner to install a smart enterprise solution. And what that means is taking a couple different solutions of NECs like, for instance, we did for Box International and SV9500 with NEC software-defined networking solution wrapped around uh, Dell switches. Um, so that's, a, that's what a smart enterprise solution would be. Um, we are an exclusive partner now, uh, as of probably a couple weeks ago, for NEC biometrics, so facial recognition software. Um, which there are many case studies for that and really it does uh, kind of hit in every vertical. Uh, there's an application for pretty much every vertical. Um, and it's only been a couple weeks and our company has about six or seven proposals uh, in front of customers for that solution. Uh, we're exclusive partner for Dell. Uh, like I said, Dell and NEC, give me just a second. Dell and NEC partnered up a little bit over a year and a half ago. Um, where they took NEC software-defined networking software and loaded it on the Dell service switches, and Forerunner is the premier partner for that implementation of that solution. So kind of cool stuff, right, from a Forerunner standpoint. Our philosophy is simple, customer satisfaction, right, treating customers the way you want to be treated. Uh, that's kind of why we do these webinars, right, uh, any new technology that we hear about, um, of course, we want to make sure that we're get it, giving you that information. Uh, our employee mix, uh, I like to show this slide because, you know, we're not a big company, but we're a pretty strong company, 128 employees now. We just added a couple more engineers on Monday. Uh, we took over the base of accounts in Louisiana and Georgia. Um, and so, you know, but I like to show this because it shows more than half of our company is actually an operations technical position. Um, you know, a very small percentage is sales. We have over 2,200 certifications on our team. Uh, we also put together a uh, what we call a Tiger team. It's um, some of our, I'd say, senior engineers and technicians are part of this team to help um, if any customer has an emergency situation or in another way to look at it is if, you know, a very large implementation in a short time, we would fly in that Tiger team. So it's kind of unique uh, in our industry. Uh, this is our, this is what we do, 
right? This is the evolution of, we call it smart enterprises, right? In line with what NEC calls it as well, right? But it's the infrastructure, it's the voice, and you see it's the virtualization now, right? Applications and voice servers, uh, data storage. We do a lot of business with the Navy and selling them storage solutions. Uh, networks, of course, right? Software-defined networking is starting to become a big play in that as well. Uh, Wi-Fi physical security, uh, biometrics, like I said, about a couple weeks ago we signed that agreement and now we have about six or seven proposals and, and a lot of our customers are asking about how facial recognition could, could help them. Uh, cyber defense SD-WAN, software-defined uh, WAN solutions, a company called Cloudgenics, if you haven't heard of them, I would look at them. Um, and then, you know, to wrap it all up, you know, Forerunner is the service management partner for all of that. And so that's, that's our story, all right? With that, that's it. Uh, the rest of this hour is all about showing you the latest product. Um, so, Brian, I'm going to pass you controls. I appreciate you uh, doing this today. Let me no uh, pass you up. controls here. Does anybody have any questions about Forerunner or what we're doing before we jump over to Brian? Nope. Okay. All right, Brian, you should have... Uh, it looks like the ball's still in your court. Oh, there it goes. Should have it now. All right. Let's see here. Let me know when you can see my screen. Got it. All right. Let me get this thing turned around. Swap them. So is it full screen there now? And you can see what's up there? Yep. I can see it, buddy. Perfect. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as you can see, my name is Brian Baker. I'm a solutions architect with NEC Corporate. Um, and while I have an, a Dallas uh, phone number, I actually reside in Ohio. And, uh, and one of the reasons that is, is this is where a lot of these applications are written. We have uh, an office of code writers here. And I'm kind of the, uh, the sales arm of that team and, and supporting the sales force. So with that said, if you got any questions, please hit me up with this application or any of the others that we, we do. And if I don't know the answer, I got the smart guys right on the other side of the wall here, so I can lean on them a little bit. But uh, my plan is to just go through a few slides of some of the things I can't demonstrate live and then go to a, a live demonstration on a little uh, demonstration system I have running on my desk here. So um, that's, that's what it will be, and hopefully we can do all that in an hour. So. Let's, uh, let's get jamming on this. So as you heard uh, Stephen say about the, the smart enterprise uh, forerunner, it, it definitely lines up with what NEC is doing. And I like to just start here because a lot of people don't know that we make other things besides large phone systems or what we call unified communications these days. So um, congratulations. You're part of this smart enterprise. You already have NEC. Um, hardware in, in some fashion or form. I think unified communications, but I don't know. Um, but what we're seeing is all this stuff is starting to come together and we're starting to lean on the different technologies to provide solutions for our customers to fix some of their problems and, and enable um, safety, efficiency, and security you see here on the right. And, and one of the big examples is, is, is um, now we can take our, our voice platforms and place them on a standard uh, server, a fault-tolerant NEC server in a virtualized world using VMware and, and what have you. So that's just one example. So we're starting to see all these uh, different technologies cross over into each other, and it's, it's pretty cool to watch happen. So if there's something up there you want to see, hit me or Steven up, and, and we can get the, the people that are experts on those different uh, technologies and, engaged. But uh, today we're here to talk about um, the unified communication piece of this. And one of the, the great things is, is with the 9000 series, unified communications is included. So all these different um, technologies on the left here, presence, messaging, conferencing, um, in the past they were kind of little options. If I wanted, you know, presence, I had to buy an empowered user license. If I wanted, you know, conferencing, I had to buy the conferencing circuitry. And, and if I want to do collaboration, same thing. Um, now, that software is included with the DVDs or however you're, you know, it's sent to you for the, the 9,000, meaning the 9,500, the uh, 9,300, 
and on the 9100. They all include unified communications. You simply license the users for which things that they need to pay based on their role. And, uh, you know, we have stuff for desktop clients, and you're going to see a little bit of that. Uh, mobility clients, call center folks. And then today I'm mainly going to talk about the attendant. And because our, our uh, emergency on-site notification, what happens when someone dials 911, integrates really well with the attendant. I'm going to show you that too since we'll have it up on the screen. And then uh, we also have, the, you know, what do we do in the guy that uh, has to take care of all this? So we have an admin tool, the MA4000, you're probably all familiar with. But uh, it all runs on the same database, one, one database to uh, make changes in, and it, it makes the changes across the board. Um, the UC attendant itself, this is an, an optional piece. So if you buy a system, it's going to come with all these, you know, desktop mobility UC client stuff. And it will have the attendant software, but it is an option outside of the standard user license. Um, so keep that in mind. Some of these other things are also the, the things that are highlighted in blue. They, uh, you know, come baked in. Um, the attendant console is one of the optional items. So you can uh, use it or not use it. But after today, you'll probably want to to implement this. Um, so what is a UA5200 or what we now call UC attendant? It's, it's a glass console. It's putting the console um, controlling calls, looking up directory information all on the PC screen. On one screen, they don't have to jump somewhere else to look up a, you know, a person's name, what extension they are. They don't have to look at a, a Rol Rolodex chart like you know I've seen in many healthcare institutions that, that changes constantly because you have patients coming in and out. It's all available to them on the screen. And one of the big perks that you get is now not only can you call someone on a voice call, but you also have the ability to chat with them or send IMs right from this application. So it kind of pulls that world into it. And if you're like me um, and my kids, they would rather send me an IM than listen to dad talk on the phone. So. Um, this pulls that into the, uh, the attending console world, and I'll show you that when we get, get to that part. So why would you want a, a PC-based attendant? You know, they do lots of repetitive things. Calls come in, transfer, look up, transfer, page, park, all these different things. Why not make it simpler for them, make their lives easier, put it all at their fingertips, give them all the information they need right in this one client. So that's what we're trying to do here. And, uh, it comes in a couple different flavors. You know, we, we can set it up as ACD or loop mode. And what that means is, is in loop mode, which is your standard, what you're probably used to, if you have three consoles and they're all turned on, a call comes in, all three of them ring, whichever person is fastest to push the button is going to get the call. Okay? Works okay, but Sometimes you need statistics or maybe they, they sit there and stare at each other waiting for the other one to push the button first. So you always have someone that's doing the, the heavy workload where the other ones are loafing. Uh, with ACD mode, it allows you to put them in a call center group so they actually log in when they're ready to take a call and it sends the call to whoever's been on, on hook the longest or idle the longest. And then you get statistics on that. So you can, you can look at it real time, see how many calls have come in, um, who's logged in, and then you can make decisions on when do I need to hire another operator or those kind of things. And the beauty of it is, is if you're running NEC's call center software, this is just another agent on that call center software if you want to put it in ACD mode. So it's, it's not like you have to go out and buy ACD if you have it already. Um, I already mentioned you get presence in IM right from the console. I'll show you that. Um, there's things like, like uh, you can send out banner messages to all the other console operators. I've, I've seen large uh, implementations where you have maybe eight, ten console operators and the supervisor or one of the operators can send a banner message that scrolls across the bottom of the screen to give them pertinent information about something they need to know about so they can disperse it to, to the rest of the, the users that, you know, as they call in or whatever. Maybe, you know, maybe something like, uh, you know, we're we're having a snow day or the elevator is not working on the third floor, um, you know, tell everybody not to go there, so it's things like that. Um, we also have other things that are integrated into this solution. Most of these are options and that you can choose to use or not use. Um, on the directory, 
we can import a file. That's a standard feature. So if you have a file of all your your uh, users, we can pull that in when we install the system, and it'll be available to all the console operators. We can also integrate it with MA4000 so that as you add somebody in MA4000, it pulls it into the directory field here. MA4000 also has the ability to automate that with Active Directory. So when a new employee comes on board, they place them into their back office Active Directory. That gets pushed to MA4000. It synchronizes the, the directory in the console, so you know it's always up to date. So we do that using LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, um, and it works real well. It's very similar to what we do here with Guest Link and Patient Link. Guest Link would be for the hospitality industry or hotels where you've got new guests coming and going on a daily basis. So how do you put them in a directory? Well, we have a link to their property management system that, uh, you know, as a new guest checks in, they get pushed to us. We know who they are. When they leave their room, they're taken out of the directory. Same thing in a, in a healthcare world with, with a patient link. That's an HL7 link that as new patients come in or discharged, it lets the database know on the um, UA5200 who's, who's there. Um, some of these other features here, on-call procedure manager, message center, and wake up. I'm going to show you slides of those, so I'll, I won't talk about them here. I think they're coming up anyway. A uh, couple things. Like me, I'm losing my voice right now because it's my third demo today. Excuse me, I take a sip of water there, but uh, this uh, happy attendant is just for that. So that attendant who's answering many, many calls and, and greeting people, thank you for calling ABC Company, good morning, whatever it is, to help them uh, sound cheerful all day and not lose their voice by the end of the day, we have a little box that can sit next to their PC. They record their greeting in it. They can have different recordings based on time of day, so they can have a morning, afternoon, after hours, whatever it may be. And then when, when a call comes in, they hit answer, it automatically plays that. They hear it in their ear, so they know when to start talking, and then they, they continue to speak after the call is answered or after the recording is done. Um, a sidebar you get from this is you can also do many recordings. So I, if someone's leaving me a phone number, I can hit the record button, and it will record that, that conversation so I can go back and play it back. Uh, I can do that manually or I can have it automatically record X amount of calls and then it will wipe out the next one when it gets full. And I say that because this is not really meant to be a full-on digital call recording system. A lot of people try to use it for that. It's simply doing a WAV file on your hard drive of your, your client. You can push it somewhere else, but it, it's, uh, if you get thousands of recordings, it's going to be difficult to find the one you want. So it's meant to do like 10, 20 calls. And then if, if something comes in, like a bomb threat or, or something of that nature, you could go in, grab that WAV file, and put it somewhere else so that it doesn't get an overwritten um, by the 11th, or 11th call coming in. So something I can't show, so I always like to put it up on the screen. It's, uh, it's fairly inexpensive. It is an option, but I highly recommend it. Um, another thing is a custom keyboard. This is a, a QWERTY keyboard that we've added some features to and put some color-coded keys on it. This is great to get a console operator up to speed very quickly and give them some of the features that uh, work really well with, the, with this system. Um, you can see we have color-coded um, buttons on here for different things, and you, know, you probably can't see them, but it says wake up and on call. There's all these different buttons on, on different usages. The hold button is red down here on the right. So you have all these different feature keys, and then we've added another row at the top to even give you more functionality. Um, you also have speed dial buttons. So you got 10 speed dial keys that you can program yourself from within the client, and then they'll work from there. So you can assign those to different departments or numbers that you dial all the time to make that a, a quick dial. Um, the dial pad, we flipped it over from a standard QWERTY keyboard, which is sort of like a um, a calculator, it's upside down from a telephone. So console operators are used to the telephone, we've made it to what they're used to so they don't have to, you know, change the way that they do things and, and speed up that, that transition period. So something I, I recommend, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. This is that on-call application I was talking about. This is uh, an, an optional item. 
And what this does is it, it allows you to schedule your resources or make an on-call list and then it's available to the operator. So if a call comes in and it's, you know, they need an air conditioning fix-it guy, she can go in there and look at the who's on call for maintenance and then, and then uh, contact that person. So you can find people faster for specific tasks. You can use it for all kinds of different things um, with, with your user database. The uh, message center tab works very closely with that. In fact, if you have both of them, they show up in the same uh, tab so that you can, when you, you look up somebody for on call, you can also take messages because normally you're going to have something to, to send to that person, hey, you need to fix that, that uh, air conditioner in room 103 or whatever it may be. And then they can go in and grab those messages and you can see when they've been read. So this, uh, this works pretty well with the uh, on-call um, application. Next one is Procedure Manager. What this is designed to do is to make different steps or different procedures the same for everybody across the board and then give you a histogram of when that procedure happened and who did it and all that kind of thing. So, you know, if it's a code blue in healthcare or if it's a, a you know, tornado coming or a bomb threat, they'll have a procedure list and they just select the procedure that they want and it's going to step them through on what to do. You know, group call overhead, I think this is for a missing uh, child, you know, what time it was missing, you're going to push this, you're going to, you're going to do an overhead page, you're going to send a group email to the next person and it kind of steps you through that entire procedure so that everybody's doing it the same way. And I've seen this used for a lot of things. I've seen it used for everything from code blue to, you know, how do I get to your facility if I'm coming from the west? So you can ask them all the different questions and, and uh, you know, take care of that person on the, on the phone. The wake up tab, this is normally used in the hospitality world where people are wanting wake ups. Um, but I've seen it used in different businesses and, and lately I've seen it used in healthcare a lot where, you know, patients want woke up, you know, to take their medications or whatever it may be. So you can schedule wake up calls from here. You can see if they were received or missed. Uh, you can have VIP wake-ups, so you schedule it here, but you make that person a VIP, meaning you're going to give them a personal call and let and you know wake them up instead of having a uh, an automated uh, machine do it. And then uh, you'll see when when those calls were scheduled and if they were canceled or missed, it all shows up on this one screen. Any questions about those? I'm going to jump out of here. You'll see those tabs on my uh, my demo system but my database isn't really up to speed, um, so I'd rather just talk to them there. Um, all right, hasn't, hasn't logged me out. So now you're looking at the, the UA5200 console, and first thing I'm gonna do is ask, does it look okay? Can you, can you see that up on the screen? Okay, I have different things yeah, I can do right. here. No, I can see it okay. So I can, I can change the background to, you know, different colors. Um, I think on the last group, that theme that I had it on, everybody liked the best, so I'll put it back to there. But that's the first thing is, this is highly customizable. So, you know, not only can I change the background colors, I can, you know, remove things if it's filters, if I don't like that. I can resize these windows. I can stretch things out. You know, I can do things like that. I can add more information, pin it to the screen. You know, each console operator can set up their screen the way they want it. Now, when they log in, it's going to be there. They don't have to go through this every time they do it. Also, whoever's in charge of this could lock it down so nobody can make any changes so that, you know, somebody doesn't inadvertently mess up their fields and now all of a sudden they can't take calls. Um, on top of that, we can always come up here and do the screen layout back to default, and it's going to put everything back to whatever your default is or whatever you choose for a default. Um, it looks real complex. It's the first thing I, I hear from uh, people that I'm training this on. But in reality, to process a phone call, it's this simple. I hear the call ringing in. It's playing a WAV file on my laptop. 
I see the call coming in here in my, in my group. It's going to show me all the calls stacking up. I hit the space bar on my PC. That answers the call. I say hello. I start typing a name, first name, last name, or extension number, and I hit enter, and it transferred that call. So space bar, type something, enter, done. It's that simple. Now there is all these other things that you can do with it or different tools to make it easier for you, and I'll show you some of these. So up here on the screen, and in the top half of the screen, I like to tell everybody, this is all about where the call is going to or the directory within your business. The bottom half is all about where the call is coming from and parking calls and, and the call control. You have all these buttons here um, to, to answer calls and that sort of thing. Keep in mind, too, that this, this works with not only a soft phone built into the PC, if that's the way you want to do it, it will also work with a standard NEC digital terminal or an IP phone, an NEC IP phone. Um, it does not use the traditional large console like you're used to probably in the past. So it uses a D-term because everything happens on this screen. The D-term is just simply used for the audio path. I tell people I would buy it with a hard desk phone sitting next to the console, not a soft phone, because we all know that PCs lock up. And if this PC locked up, I can't get to this application, I can't process phone calls. But if I have a hard phone sitting next to it, I can continue to at least transfer calls and, and uh, keep the business up and working. So I'll keep that in mind. Um, so up here, this is my main directory. You see it has main. I could have several different directory tabs up here if I wanted to. It's real simple to add a new one. I just come up here, hey, new. I want a new listing. And now I have a new listing. I can move that over next to the other one if I want to. I can give it a name. I'm going to rename this and call it uh, Forerunner. So we now have a Forerunner tab. It's exactly the same as my main tab, but you know I want to filter that out. So that's what these filters are for. I can filter this down and uh, um, put in there what I want. I can here I can go by employee location. It depends on how you have your database set up. You'll have different things here. Um, that one's not set up. Organization. So let's pretend that NEC is really Forerunner. Um, I go like that. Now I only have one. NEC person in here, John Horn, that is now my Forerunner tab. So once I'm done with this, I can get rid of these, these uh, uh, filters, and I have now, I have a main, which is everybody, and I have a Forerunner tab, which is just John Horn. So you can build them across the screen, you can do it by location, you can do it by department, however you want to design it. And you can also set these up ahead of time and push them out to your attendant. So you don't have to worry about each attendant going through this process. You can uh, build them from the main system and then push them out. When they log in, they'll be there. Uh, we can also do searches by first name, last name. So if I come down here and I start typing J-O, it found John Horn and John Stokes. So I could just hit enter and it's going to call whichever one I click on or if I continue to type, you can do it that way. If I uh, say, oh, I want to type by last name, that's what the, the caller asked me for Mr. Horn, I type in Horn, and it found them, okay? I can also type in their extension number if I've got all the extension numbers memorized from the way I've done it forever, and it's still going to find that person. Once it finds that person, it's going to give you their contact information over here on the, on the edge of the screen, and if I pin more information to it or additional details, it's going to give me their, you know, their picture, their uh, address, and different things about that person, their skills, all those kinds of things. Um, excuse me for a second. I'm getting dinged. Um, this is their contact methods, and they get to choose which method they want to be contacted by, and it will be at the top. And if I just press this, it's going to call him right now at his primary extension. If he wanted to be called at this number instead, let's say it's his uh, mobile device or what have you, that would be at the top. And when I hit enter, it's going to just call him by that device. So it, it always has like a top down. It also has his IM address here, which is something I mentioned earlier. 
you now have the ability to send instant messages to your users as long as they're running our UC desktop or mobility app, and it will go to both their desktop and their mobile phone. And I'm going to just uh, use that as an example right now. So right now I've uh, I I started sending him a message. It's come up down here. I say, hey, hey, John, give me a call. So I sent that, and it immediately went to his phone, and I've got his UC client running in the background here. So you see this screen pop. This is really um, John Horn. And if I come over to his, his client, it's showing me that message. Hey, John, give me a call. So he can either pick up the phone and call me, come down here, hit the handset, and it's going to call me back. That's sort of how the instant messaging works. It also will integrate with people outside of the system. So if they have AOL Instant Messenger, they have uh, Gmail, they have whatever, um, as long as that use, it supports federation, the XMPP protocol, we can federate with them so we can not only put them in our contact list and have their um, IM address there, but it will show up whether they're off the phone, on the phone, off the phone, their presence information. Now, it does require a handshake to make that part happen because, you know, you, you don't want to be able to just put somebody's IM address in there and then just see if they're on the phone or not. So it will send them a message and say, hey, do you know this Brian Baker guy? If they acknowledge it, now we've done a handshake. They can see my presence. I can see their presence. So it does have that capability. Um, some of the other things here, and if you guys got any questions, you know, we've got a small group here. Please ask me if something don't make sense or I'm going too fast. I'll, uh, I'll try to accommodate you. We also have what we call speed dial keys. So if I open this up, I've got several speed dial buttons already. And you'll notice next to that person's name, it shows me their presence information that they've set on their end. It also turns red if they go off hook. So let me, uh, so there's John Horn. He just went off hook. You see he's turned red. If uh, John Horn changes his present state, say he went to lunch, he goes to lunch, then that's going to show up on there. So we have, it, it integrates tightly with our UC application. If, if you don't have UC, it's simply going to give you the on hook, off hook status, or people are not using it, it'll work that way. Uh, you can see down here, it always gives me the next button. I can assign that. I can simply go right click on this, change the properties, and plug in, you know, the, the person's name. If they're internal, I can say monitor, and it's going to show me that off hook, on hook status. So kind of what that is. Um, tell me I didn't put nothing in there. Uh, another thing that you can do, that's kind of laborious to do it that way, is you can right click here and you can say, give me a new tab. Uh, it's going to gyrate a little bit. And this is not normal. This is doing this because I'm running this on a virtual instance of the little uh, box I got next to me here, which I forgot to show you that. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but you can see I've split the screen into two different groups. Now, if I wanted to put John on there, I already have John on there, uh, I could simply just come up there. Let me get rid of that so everybody shows up. So I got everybody on here. Well, let's pick somebody I don't have yet. So if, say I want Martin, I want to make him the next speed dial button. I simply drag him down, release him, and now he's, he's a button. So you can simply do that until you get all the speed dials you want. You can keep going across the screen. I can make several speed dial tabs if I need to. They can kind of follow my, my uh, directory tabs so I can have one for each department, each location. Whatever makes sense to you, even within the speed dial, I can build them with different names at the top of each one of these rows or have several groups assigned. I can change the, na the name of that tab so it makes all, all the, you know, makes sense to everybody. Once I'm done, I right click it and move back to the pre previous tab group and it's going to go back to the way it was. And like, like I said, normally it wouldn't make all those gyrations. In fact, uh, let me show you what I've got going on here. Um, back to my PC, 
you know, now with the 9500, we can virtualize this this uh, on a, a regular Windows server, a regular server, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. This is the VMware um, uh, management tool, and you can see that I have SP9500 running, I have the UC client running, I have some um, SIP trunks running so I can simulate outbound and inbound calls. If I wanted to turn this off and turn on the hotel motel version, which I have to do next week for another client, I could do that, just turn it off and turn it back on. I have, have this running on a little Intel Nook, which is not designed to be a production um, server, but it's very small, easy for me to carry around, and uh, I can easily you know, populate or do demonstrations either from my desk over the web or out of the customer site. This is kind of the setup. I got the little nook here, a little um, PoE switch, a wireless router. I can connect my mobile apps in there, desktop phone apps, PC-based consoles, the call center, everything I can run on that little um, nook box. I think that's, that's pretty cool. back here. So <clears throat> back to this application, um, you can also rearrange these these uh, headers. So I can simply, if I don't like the middle name there, I can move it down and put it at the end. I can stretch things out if the addresses aren't fitting. I can change this however I want it to look. I can also add and remove different uh, columns by simply going into um, the preference page here, go to that person's database. Say I, I didn't like having that middle name on there, I could just click on that and remove it. Now it's not gonna be on there. If I want one of these other things, I can just click on that and move it over. So it's just as simple as that. I say okay. So now I've got the office code and no longer do I have a middle name. Um, you'll also notice here that it has the person's location status. So earlier I changed John Horn to lunch, so now I can see that right from this screen. If I change John back, say he's back at his desk, so the console operator will know if uh, John is using that, that application, whether he's at his desk or not. That status also has the ability to follow your calendar so if you're in a meeting, you don't have to do anything. It's going to show up here you're in a meeting. If you don't touch your keyboard after a while, it's going to time out and put you stepped away like it has for Emma Smith. So it's, it's really interactive and easy to, to uh, use. Is anybody using um, our Unified Communication or UC700 client today that's out there in the audience? No, we're not. Okay. Well, keep in mind, it's something that comes with this, the 9500, and it's, it's really, really reasonable. It's uh, easy to use. So um, the other thing that I have up here is this emergency on-site. I told you earlier about it. I was going to show this to you because it's, it's embedded into the console operator. Uh, this is, you know, what happens when someone calls 911. Normally, the call is going to go out to the public safety answering point. Sometimes you have it stay internal, but most customers would you know, not, rather not be responsible for that call, so they send it out to uh, the emergency squad. But sometimes inside, you don't even know that has happened. So what's going to happen here, when someone makes a 911 call, it's going to go out like it normally does, and they're going to get the uh, emergency operator, but at the same time, it's going to do screen pops either at the console, if you're running it in, within the console, or in a standalone application. And they're going to see where that, when that call happened, where it came from, you know, what address, what cubicle, whatever, however you have your database set up, they're going to see that information. They'll also see, you know, that it, you know, comments could be handicapped, person has heart condition, diabetic, um, whatever it may be, they're going to see that information. And I'll show you this here real quickly, and I'll warn you because it, it makes a siren sound on my my uh, laptop until I acknowledge that call, and it'll keep on squealing until somebody acknowledges it um, throughout the, the building. So I'm going to go off hook here and dial just a fake number. 
So there it's, it's going off, and there's the new call coming in. I have to hit the knowledge button, and uh, it takes care of it. And I've muted it because it takes a little while because my uh, processor and my, my Nook is not the uh, fastest. In fact, I acknowledged the wrong one. That took care of it right away. And I didn't. It'll time out. But anyway, so that call is going to keep squealing on everybody that, that had a screen pop until somebody acknowledges it and takes ownership of that call. Um, the next thing that usually is required is now you have to let somebody in-house know that someone dialed 911 and it's up in, you know, Q21. So you, you have a group notification button here. You press that and you decide who it needs to go to. In our case here, I'm just going to say the whole organization, and I'm going to say need need help ASAP, and go to Q21, third floor. This is all different. And then I'm going to send that. It's going to say, you really want to send this? I say yes. And now that call got sent out. You can probably hear my phone ding. It's coming across the display of my phone. It will, it will do that for IP phones only because it's using the data side of the, uh, the network to make that happen. I see up on the screen, I know you can't see this, but it says need help ASAP, go to cube 21 third floor. That's what's up on the screen until I hit OK and then it disappears. It also sends out instant messages to all those people that are using that UC client and the console. So. Here I've got the console. These are the ones that I've been doing in, in my demos and tests. And uh, there's the bottom one. It says, you know, emergency notification. Also, that person got it on their um, UC client, on their desktop client. And if they were using our mobile client on their Android or iPhone, they're going to see that same information walking around the building. So I think this is a, a great addition to uh, the console. Um, it will also send out an email uh, or all three things at the same time. Depends on the users you pick and what contact methods that they have. It keeps a histogram of those, those uh, group notifications so you could actually use this as a template. So if, if you're going to need to send out the same one, you could just grab it, right click and say resend the notification. And it's going to send out that same uh, message. Really not meant to be a full um, mass notification system, they have a lot more features and functionalities, but it's just something to give you, you know, the, the basic features of, of letting people know a 911 call has happened or whatever it may be, you know, lockdown or um, gun in the house or whatever it may be, they have a simple way to do that. Um, that's kind of everything that I was going to show. Do we have any questions out there or, yeah. or um, we got a little bit Great. of time here? Great. Yeah, great job, Brian. I appreciate that. Really good overview. I appreciate it. All right, um, Gary, anybody else have any questions?